Hello everyone and welcome for DMS lecture. So in previous uh, lecture we have discussed the theory regarding uh, pumps that is centrifugal pump. So let's see how we can design a centrifugal pump. So start with the <clears throat> a simple numerical. A design of centrifugal pump. Uh, with the numerical, uh, the given data, <clears throat> which refers suction static head, that is a 5 meter. Length of the suction pipe is 10 meter. Suction delivery head is 20 meter. Delivery pipe length is 30 meter. And the discharge, which is required, is 1500 liter per minute. So the to perform complete the design, the pump showing the suitable layout. Okay, so first of all, we have just drawn the layout. Here we have shown the different heads. Here the suction head is shown over here and it's a delivery head. So it is totally depend upon the side from the center of the impeller. Okay, so I hope everybody is aware with the different type of heads available. Okay, so this is the basic layout. Whenever you start the design, you must have to draw this uh, basic uh, diagram oh, layout for centrifugal pump. So the discharge is given in a liter per minute. We have convert into the meter cube per second. So just divided by six, 60 multiplied by 1000. So discharge Q is equal to 0 0.025 meter cube per second. HS, that is suction head, is 5 meter. HD, delivery head, is uh, 20 meter. Length of suction pipe is uh, 10 meter. And length of delivery pipe is 30 meter, which is given. Uh, considering the water temperature is a uh, normal, <coughs> that is a room temperature, now start with the design with the basic uh, of calculation <clears throat> or we can say uh, finding the diameter of suction pipe. Now here uh, basically we are considering the net positive suction head consideration. The velocity uh, to avoid the cavitation it should be in a range between 1.5 to 5 meter second. Now uh, we are selecting or assuming the initial velocity as we don't know uh, what should be the velocity. So initially we are assuming a velocity of 3 meter per second. Now based on the dis uh, velocity, we first of all find out the discharge. So we have a velocity we have a discharge now we can able to find out the area okay now we are able to find out the area here q is equal to area of suction pipe multiplied by the velocity at suction so pi by 4 ds square multiplied by vs that is a suction velocity ds is the diameter of suction pipe so putting all the values what we get the diameter of the suction pipe is 1.0.103 meter. So, checking with the standards available in the market, the value, standard value nearer to this is 110 millimeter. Okay, so 0 0.110 is available diameter size for suction pipe okay so we are selecting that now next one to find the diameter of the delivery pipe now uh, it is assumed that the delivery pipe should be lesser by 15 to 20 mm in size because it has to be maintain the pressure because as we seen the suction head is always less and delivery head is always more so that the pressure should be maintained and the discharge which is necessary that should be delivered with the particular time 
and with the particular quantity. So for that to increase the discharge rate or you can say uh, to develop that much pressure, we need to reduce the diameter size of the pipe so that that much pressure has to be built. So DD, that is the diameter of delivery pipe is equal to DS minus 20 mm. So suction time, the diameter of the pipe is 110 minus 20. So delivery pipe diameter is 90 mm. Now we have to find out the velocity of the delivery pipe. As we have an area, we can easily find out the velocity. So discharge Q is equal to area of delivery pipe multiplied by velocity of delivery pipe. What do we get? The velocity of delivery pipe is 3.93 meter per second. As we discussed, the velocity should be greater than that, than that of the delivery velocity should be greater than that of suction velocity. Now next one, uh, we need to find out the different head losses due to uh, friction in the suction pipe. So first of all, start with the suction uh, HFS, that is a friction loss due to suction pipe. <clears throat> HFS is equal to F into LS into VS square divided by 2G DS. Now here F, that is a frictional uh, coefficient, which is considered as 0.03. Le length of suction that is given 10 meter velocity we know diameter we know so putting all the values what we get the loss due to the friction at the suction pipe is equal to 1.25 meter now similarly to find the head losses due to friction in delivery pipe same equation only no notation has been changed that is a hfd is equal to f into d ld into vd square divided by 2g d so putting all the values what we get the head loss due to friction in delivery pipe is 7.87 meter now we have to find out the manometric head that is a hm hm now here is very important manometric head should be positive okay and it should be greater than than that of the, the delivery head and suction head so here if we know that uh, go to the basic data the suction head is 5 meter the delivery head is uh, 20 20 meter so manometric head should be greater than this then and then only we can able to trans uh, shifting or you can say pump the water properly so the manometric head is equal to hs plus hd plus hfs plus hfd plus v square upon 2g now putting all the values what we get hm is equal to 34.9 meter okay so and it is a positive so we can go for further if the value of hm is going to be negative it means that cavitation must be occur so always consider or note that the value of hm should be positive to select the specific speed of a centrifugal pump that is denoted by ns ns is equal to n square root of q divided by h raised to 3 by 4 so where n is the speed of pump in rpm q is the discharge meter cube per second and h is the head in meter now the rpm is depend upon different specific speeds when the value of ns is considered in between 20 to 35 their specific speeds are few speeds are given so ns is uh, equal to uh, if it is uh, in between 70.81 the rpm should be 916 
as soon as it increases the speed get increases so selecting the value of ns from here as we have uh, using a pump with the rpm of 1500 so the value of ns is 27.82 so if uh, this standard value is uh, available into the centrifugal pump uh, uh, design data book but uh, in our phd it is not available so i request all you all of you just you can buy hard this value okay so we have find out the ns value based on the motor speed that is 1500 rpm now find out the motor capacity so uh, normally we have considering 75 percent overall efficiency and motor power is equal to w into q into h divided by efficiency where w is a specific weight of water so specific weight of water that is 9810 newton per meter cube for water so putting the value of w q and h here we have considering manometric height so power P of motor is equal to 11,412.3 watts. So it's nothing but 11.41 kilowatt. Uh, from PSG, referring page number 5.124, selecting three phase put mounted motor. So the motor capacity standard available is 22 kilowatt. motor speed as we have already selected that is 1500 rpm torque you can calculate next one design of impeller so in a design of impeller what we need we have to understand the uh, velocity then how the water is in <coughs> and out so everything must know and based on that the entry and exit based on that the velocity uh, the diagram is get varied so we will discuss a basic velocity diagram or generalized velocity diagram for centrifugal pump you can uh, vary uh, with the different combinations okay so initially uh, in centrifugal pump the water came from this passage okay and it leaves from here so entry of the water is from i section that is a this point okay and water leaves from here to here so in this manner the in uh, water can leave in centrifugal pump so how you can draw a the velocity diagram for that so here the initial angle alpha one is 90 degree so at that time whirling velocity is zero okay and at the exit the whirling velocity gets increased uh, as the velocity of the uh, relative velocity of the water get increased so the remaining values also get increased so here initially what we consider the friction velocity is equal to v1 that is the velocity of water then inclination alpha 1 is equal to 90 degree okay so the initial entry of water is it at 90 degree whirling velocity at that time is equal to zero okay so similarly you can uh, find out this velocity diagram okay as the impeller is rotating uh, with the angular velocity omega Now to, to find the shaft diameter of the impeller ds the uh, diameter uh, shaft is normally subjected to the bending and torsional moment bending because of uh, uh, that uh, impeller weight and torsional moment that is a, it can be rotated continuously so that that torsional moment is also uh, important as it is connected with the shaft and the impeller so the power we have that is 15 kilowatt 
p is equal to 2 pi nt by 60. So based on this, you can find out the torque. Torque T is equal to 95.5 Newton meter. So it is 95.5 into 10 raised to 3 Newton mm. Now we will select the material referring page to page number 1.9. That is a C45 with the value of tau is 45 megapascal. So tau uh, torque T is equal to pi by 16 ds cube into tau A. So putting all the values what we get ds is equal to 22.1. Modifying this ds into suitable value nearest standard value that is ds is equal to 25 mm. Now next to find out the diameter of hub. So with the help of empirical relation, you can directly find out the value of uh, diameter of hub. dh is equal to ds plus 15 mm. So dh is equal to 40 mm. That is a diameter of hub. Now we have to find out the diameter of I, DE. As the velocity of water at the inlet of the eye is slightly higher than the velocity of water in the suction pipe because uh, the area is get reduced and because of that that velocity get increased hence the v is kept fairly low as uh, the friction losses is to be minimized so the velocity ve is equal to 3 meter per second theoretical uh, discharge should be pi by 4 d square minus dh square into ve so pi th is equal to q actual divided by overall efficiency so overall efficiency uh, sorry volumetric efficiency so volumetric efficiency we are normally considering is a 95 percent so theoretical discharge as we have actual discharge that is 0 0.025 divided by uh, volumetric efficiency 0 0.95 it is equal to theoretical discharge which is equal to pi by 4 d square minus 40 square into 3 into 10 raised to minus 3 raised to 2. So diameter of I is equal to 112.23 mm and which is we can furtherly modify it to 150 mm. Now to find the inlet diameter of the impeller D1. Generally uh, the inlet diameter of impeller is made equal to the i diameter of the radial flow type of impeller because uh, we have to ensure that the smooth flow without turbulence should be occurred okay so d1 is equal to d is equal to 150 mm now next one we have to find out the width of that inlet <coughs> that is uh, denoted by b1 so q actual is equal to k1 into pi into t1 into b1 into vf1 okay so k1 is the blockage factor at the inlet which is considered up to the 0 0.85 to 0 0.9 per percent uh, sorry 0 0.85 to 0 0.9 we are considering 85% blockage uh, factor. Vf1 is equal to 0 0.5 times or 1.1 times of Ve. So Vf is equal to 1.1 into 3, which is equal to 3.3 .3 meter per second. So discharge Q 0 0.025 is equal to K1, that is 0 0.85 multiplied by pi into 115 divided by 1000 into b1 into 3.3 so the width at the inlet b1 is equal to 0 0.0247 meter that is nothing but 24.7 meter which we have modified with the standard uh, uh, dimension that is a 25 mm now to find actual velocity of the flow we can recalculate putting the all data and calculating the value of vf1 
so actual value of vf1 is equal to 3.26 meter per second now next one <clears throat> to find the vane angle at the inlet that is a beta 1 from the inlet velocity diagram which we have discussed previously <coughs> we can see once again so this is a velocity diagram so from this diagram we had to calculate the remaining parameters To find out the vane angle at the inlet beta 1 from the inlet velocity diagram, tan beta 1 is equal to Vf1 divided by U1. Now U1 that is the velocity inlet pi dn divided by 60 is equal to pi into 0 0.115 into 1500 divided by 60. So U1 is equal to 9.03 meter per second. So beta 1 is equal to 19.85 degree in actual practices the beta varies from 10 degree to 25 degree so it is in between the given range and our design is same for turbulence purpose to find the outer diameter of the impeller u2 is equal to pi d2n divided by 60. now u2 we can calculate by using a uh, manometric head also so u2 is equal to ku into square root of 2 g h m so ku is the speed ratio which is varies from 0 0.9 to 1.1 we are considering ku is equal to 1 so pi d2 into 150 divided by 60 is equal to 1 into square root of 2 into 9.81 into 34.9 so diameter outside diameter outer diameter of impeller d2 is equal to 0 0.333 meter okay now the actual velocity of the out uh, okay one one more thing this diameter you cannot modify for the standard well because if you changes the change the diameter the angular velocities and all the parameters get changed or varied so you could not change this value now the actual velocity at outlet u2 is equal to pi into 333 into 1500 divided by 60 so u2 is equal to 26.15 meter per second so the, the selecting outlet vane angle that is a beta 2 in centrifugal pump the vanes are backward curved so that the velocity is minimum v2 is minimum and to remind the total energy supplied appears as the pressure head so beta 2 is equal to uh, beta 2 should be in between a range of 15 degree to 25 degree so here we are considering beta 2 is equal to 25 degree to find out the width of the impeller at the exit v2 is equal to q actual into k2 into pi d2 v2 into vf2 so backward factor k2 is equal to 0 0.9 0 0.95 considering in between so kt is equal to 0 0.92 vf2 the velocity of flow exit that is a 0 0.9 times of vf1 actual vf1 so 0 0.9 times of 3.36 that is vf2 is equal to 2.934 meter per second so putting all the values of q d b uh, sorry d and vf2 what we get b2 is equal to 8.85 meter now we can change the width b2 is equal to 10. now to find out the radius of curvature of the vanes as shown in figure the vane shape 
should be such that the water pressure should not be too much long otherwise the frictional losses would be increased and it should be water should be passes very easily without restriction so by analytical or by geometrical uh, we can calculate the radius of curvature r is equal to r2 square minus r1 square divided by 2 into r2 cos of beta 2 minus r1 cos of beta 1 so putting all the values what we get the radius of curvature r is equal to 126 mm that is 0 0.126 meter now <clears throat> the very much important task that is to find out the number of veins how much number of veins should be on impeller so the virtual head is developed theoretically by having an infinity number of veins but in practices it is not possible but we have to find out the actual infinite number of veins to be we can use on actual practices by using uh, according to the p federal number of veins are given by using empirical relation n is equal to 0 0.6 d2 plus d1 divided by d2 minus d1 into sine of gamma where gamma is beta 1 plus beta 2 by 2 okay so putting all the equations uh, all the values in the equations what we get the number n is equal to 5.1 so <clears throat> In practical aspect, we are using uh, the number of veins are from uh, in between from 5 to 12. So here we are using number of veins n is equal to 7. Okay. Okay. So next point to find out the thickness of vein T. So theoretical discharge QTH is equal to pi D1 B1 minus T divided of uh, T divided by sine of beta 1 into B1 into N whole multiplied by VF1. So calculating the putting all the values and calculating the thickness of the veins T is equal to 1.86 meter uh, mm. So it is uh, very very small so we have to uh, with respect to the consideration of the uh, manufacturing point of view we are man uh, we are always manufacture such type of uh, veins are in a castings so for casting purpose we need minimum thickness of 5 mm to 8 mm for which can give a better result so we are considering the thickness of the veins t is equal to 6 mm okay so in today's lecture that much design uh, we will consider here what we have considered uh, what we have discussed we have uh, seen the basic uh, layout of uh, basic layout of uh, centrifugal pump centrifugal pump we have designed suction head uh, suction pipe then delivery pipe then uh, the basic all the dimensions uh, of impeller diameter inner diameter outer diameter thickness uh, then uh, input thick, uh, width output width so everything we have designed uh, the number of veins okay so remaining the casing shaft everything we will discuss in a further lecture okay so thank you very much if you have any doubt uh, i'm also posting a theory with respect to the centrifugal pump in a chat box so you can refer that theory also to understand a better manner if you have still any uh, doubt you can feel free to contact me okay thank you Thank you very much.